Okay, good morning everybody. So we're going to be looking at our next chapter today, which is learning about smoke. Obviously up to this point, we found that they've built the raft, that they've decided that they're going to follow the map to find the X, and that they just needed to collect some berries um, and some food to take with them on their raft. After finding out that Con, um, about her, obviously her life and how she was, uh, both her parents died, and that she was being brought up by her great aunt, who would send her away on every summer to different places. And that is why she was in the, in the jungle to start with. Okay, so smoke. The next day dawned swelteringly hot. All four woke slick with sweat, with dragonflies trying to drink their, from their skin. For breakfast, Con found a banana tree and they made a sack from Max's jumper and filled it until bananas poked out of the neck. They gorged an unripe, on unripe bananas until Max was sick on his own shoes. After breakfast, a wind began to pick up. It was a very welcome breeze on Fred's face as he prepared the raft, double checking every knot. It was the same wind that nearly killed them. Fred and Leela were crouched on the raft in the river, testing how it moved under their weight and retying vines. Con and Max were hunting for berries to add to their provisions. Backer was half in, half out of Leela's pocket, sniffing the breeze. A swirl of air reached them from the jungle and Backer let out a mew. A shiver passed down Fred's spine. Does something smell odd to you? Backer seemed nervous. He began trying to bite Leela's hem into ribbons. Leela stared back towards the path to her clearing. Where there should have been shards of green sunlight, there was a swirl of grey. Is that dust? It's smoke, said Fred. He sniffed again. It's a fire. For a moment they both stared at the billowing grey, paralysed. Then Leela let out a scream, and the scream shook the whole raft. Max, where's Max? He was right there, on the bank with Con. The smoke began to flow like water, sweeping out of the trees towards them. Fred's eyes stung. There was a pounding of feet, and Con, began, Con came sprinting out of the bushes, her hair flying behind her, catching in the trees. She half dived, half fell into the river, and swam, splashing frantically towards the raft. I saw it, she cried hauling herself over the edge. The clearing's on fire, it's horrible. Her eyes were red and wild. She stared around. Where's Max? I thought he was with you. Leela's face was unrecognisable. What? No. He said he was going to find you. He wanted to play with Baka. No, this can't be happening. Leela stood up on the raft and shouted, Max! I'm here. The voice was tiny and thin and sounded of pure panic. Max had scrambled up a tree. He was sitting whimpering, unable to scream, in the branches overhanging the river. Fred stared up at him, dived between shock, divided between shock and horror. How did you get up there? It's so high, said Con. Jump in, Max. Jump in the water, called Leela. I can't. Max, I am ordering you. I'm your big sister and you do not. You do what I say. Max's voice was a shriek. I can't. He started crying in long, wordless wails, balanced over the river. Fred began pulling off his boots, but Leela thrust back at Con and was in the water. Fred had never seen a human swim so fast. She scrambled up the bank, her nails tearing against the mud, and sprinted for the tree. She began climbing, hauling herself up with just her arms, where the footholds had failed. Max, she called, just stay there. Fred and Con sat on the raft below. Con holding back it in both hands, watching, coughing as the smoke thickened around them. Max was crouching like a sloth, with his arms and legs wrapped around the branch. Fred squinted up to see Leela crawling along the branch, t talking to him, coaxing him, trying to untangle him, her body shaking as she moved. Max had stopped crying and was now rigid-faced and completely silent, which was somehow more frightening than the screaming. The first flames appeared, snaking along the path with the clearing. The heat sent up sparks, catching at Leela's skin and Max's feet. There was a bang, like an erupting paper bag, as below them, seed pod exploded in the heat. Jump in, Fred shouted wildly. Just jump in and we'll come and get you. There was only smoke now, smoke and the sound of Leela calling to Max, singing to him, coaxing him desperately. Jump, shrieked Con. Please jump now. Then two bodies plummeted down into the river. The water closed over them. 
They landed in an eddy of water, and the current swept the two of them too fast into the middle of the river, where there were rapids. Fred squinted through the smoke. Their heads did not resurface. Take the pole, he said to Con, and if we die, tell my dad I'm sorry. He dived headfirst into the brown water and struck out towards the rapids. Fred opened his eyes, but all he could see was churning foam. A body smashed into his and he grabbed it. It was Max. He tried through, the, through his panic to remember what he had read about saving people from drowning. He had to gently cup her chin, cup their chin in your hand. He remembered that clearly. But how? The current was too fast to make cupping any kind seem, seem plausible. Fred spun on to his back and hauled Max up to lie on his stomach, trying to keep the boy's head out of the water. He couldn't tell if Max was breathing. With one arm, he began to swim backwards, towards the bank. The water kept trying to pull him under, and he could only see the sm spray and smoke and the river sweeping over his face with every stroke. Don't panic, he whispered to himself. This would be a bad moment to panic. A burning branch fell into the water inches away from them. Max gave a cough and spat out a water beetle, hacking weakly as the water hacking weakly as the water splashed washed over them again. Just as Fred was starting to feel that panicking was really the only other available option, he saw something in the smoke. A yell came over the sound of the fire and the water in his ears. Fred! Max! It was Con. Over here, he called. Swim towards me, she screamed. I can't, the current. It was bitterly hard staying in one place. One of his legs, legs was starting to cramp and he was terrified that Max's head would go under the water. A shape came out of the smoke. It was the raft. Con was covered in great ash. She was paddling hard mm -hmm. with both hands roaring their names as she came. <clears throat> she reached Fred just as he hit a swirl in the current. There was a painful cracking as his ears smacked against the wood and a scream from Con, a great scrambling and a burning in his muscles. But then Fred was kneeling on the raft, coughing up water, and Max was there, spitting and vomiting up water and leaves and banana. Where's Leela? asked Con. Her voice was wild and high. Where's Leela? I couldn't see her. Fred choked out a mouthful of water and crawled to the edge of the raft. He tried to draw in a deep enough breath to dive in again, but each gasp of air made him gag. There was a great lurch and they tipped sideways. Two hands appeared, then Leela's face, her chin on the edge of the raft. Leela! Fred let out a noise he hadn't known he was capable of, capable of, something between a roar and a whoop, and grabbed her wrists, then her shoulders, heaving her to the centre of the raft. She lay there panting. She had a cut across at the bridge of her nose, and blood ran down her mouth and chin, but she was alive. M Max, she gasped. He's here, he's fine, Con was shouting, though her face was very close to Leela's. Just breathe, he's fine, I swear. He pushed with a pole, <clears> thrusting <throat> the raft to the side of the river, where the current flowed steadily, propelling them away from the flames. At last, when the air was clear and the fire crackling in the distance, she guided the raft into the shallows, where it stilled, swaying on the water. A crowd of blue butterflies alighted on the bank next to them. Max was wearing pondweed on his head like a tiara. Lilla cradled him in her arms. He cradled Bacca. Bacca cradles Max, Max's thumb. It was a long time before anybody spoke. What happens now? said Lila. Do we go back? I don't know. Everything was burnt, said Con. She was shivering with shock, and although the sun was warm, the hairs along her arms were standing on end. I saw it. The den and the bees. Everything, the whole clearing. Con wiped her, the ash from her face. She looked like a panda bear. It was our fire. We should have left somebody to watch it. The embers were too hot. Fred spoke quietly. So we follow the map. Wait. Wasn't the map in your pocket? asked Leela. I swamped Fred's gut. Oh, oh no, he said. He reached in his pocket and fished out the red leather pouch. The ink on the map had run so badly that it was no more than a blackish smudge. The paper itself was pulp and he passed so he and as he passed it to Leela, it tore in two. <coughs> he swallowed. I'm sorry, he whispered. Leela looked as though she might cry. Don't be. There was an impatient tut behind them, a sort of cough, and the sound of scratching. 
You're both so defeatist, said Com. She had pulled a flint from her pocket, and as they watched, she tore a strip of bark from the raft and began etching something on it. There, that was the squiggle, and that was where the river curved, she said. Oh, your photographic memory, said Max. A uh, oh, photogenic memory, said Max. Photographic, said Com. She kept scratching. There, what do you think? Does that look right? Fred studied her map. It doesn't look like that. Oh, actually, it does look almost exactly. Not almost exactly, said Con. I was just being polite, actually. I know it's right. Fred looked at the bag and then up at Leela and Max and Con. Whatever it is that's on that map, it's got to be better than what's back there. What do you say? That same feeling, fear and hope and something that felt like what his father called sheer minded sheer mindedness began to churn inside his stomach. Con bit her lip. Then, without a word, she took up the pole again and pushed the raft off the bank, back into the river and, cu cu and the corridor of dappled green light. Left at the next fork, she asked. Yes, left at the next fork, said Leela. They coasted onwards for the whole day. Some of the tributaries were only eight feet across, with a cathedral roof of branches above them creating a midnight darkness. Others were so wide and bright it was hard to see the opposite shore. As the sky grew pink, Fred turned and saw on the far bank a caiman as big as a great dame. It lay in the mud, its eyes at half-mast, staring straight ahead. His heart clenched. What do we do? His con. She spoke without moving a single facial muscle. Nothing, said Leela. Fred held the pole in his hand like a spear, but the caiman didn't move as they floated past. The sun dipped lower over the river ahead of them, the light grey pur purplish and th the light grew purplish and thin. Fred could no longer see beneath the surface of the water. We were, we're not safe, are we? said Con. No, said Fred, but we could pretend we are. Leela tightened her grip on Backer's paw. Let's act as if the river's on our side. Let's act, let's act as if the jungle wants us to win. The stars began, began to came out, come out, casting the water deep black under a silver flecked sky. Even if the rivers don't, rivers don't take sides, even then. Okay, we're going to stop it there. And next chapter is going to be called On the River. So obviously we're going to find out what they're going to be doing on the river.